hi guys how are you all doing today welcome back to my channel if this is your first time welcome guys let me tell you i had to dig up this wig for you guys to see i think this was the wig i used um uh, for photo shoots like months ago and i'm like wait hi how are you doing my name is anu adediri this is your first time i reside in edmonton alberta canada i speak on faith relationships weddings and life matters so today i'm going to be doing one of those funny um interesting videos i do but i was talking about the hair yes so i used it quite a bit um a while ago and i was like you know what instead of having my low cut every time on the channel you know let's just spice it up today you know how do you all like it do you like the color comment comment in the comment section to see and um, give me your feedback about this particular wig but I hope y'all are keeping safe and y'all are doing well because you must keep safe. You must do well. So today I am going to be sharing something very important. Um, it's a story time tale and I'm going to be talking about it because I feel like it is important that we discuss it. It is a relationship I'm grateful for. A relationship that broke that I'm grateful for. And I'm going to try to talk about it and summarize some parts so that we don't stay here forever so um my longest relationship before that particular relationship was two and a half years and from my get to know me video i had that relationship two and a half years and god told me that this was not the direction it was leading me towards it was so disheartening but one of it was one of the 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 it was one of those things i did with courage that i had to tell the guy no He's married now with a kid, so and we are friends. So we are I'm grateful to God for that relationship. Um so by 2015, I got into this relationship because I, I was sure I went to pray. I I did everything that I, I felt was right um in, in every sense of it to like pray, see God's face, get to know this person. I asked questions around, but in 2014, he actually started talking to me and was talking to me about okay, wanting to be my friend, early 2015. So he gave me <laughs> so let me give you the gist. So I met him through a friend. And, um, when we met, this friend was like, just, we we're just friends like that, like that, like that casual friend will anger, will talk, will keep it. Like it was just a whole lot going on. Um, so let me give you the gist. So this particular person, um, asks me out at about, I think November. And he's like, he's giving me to 31st of December to give him an answer. That's 31st of Dece December, 2014. And I'm wondering, ah. <laughs> number one no you can't give an ultimatum when it comes to decisions like this if you're not if you know that you can't patiently wait for me to like get myself together get to pray here from god it's a no so we went different ways we were just talking casually hello hello hi hi it was it was all that then when it was 2015 i traveled i was in canada i came back to nigeria for law school and um, I went to pray and this was the same person that was still on my mind. Um, to be very sincere, were there other guys that were like on my matter? So I was confused at some point because there were three guys that were like a really good prospect, like two lawyers, one doctor. So like your girl was like, oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> so I, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's do this. I'm going to go pray. I'm going to let God know this is what I feel. This is how I feel about this individual. These are the things that I, like, I just wanted to pour my heart to God. So I went for a retreat that time and I prayed. I was, I was really, really down to like whatever God tells me. And it was this doctor guy. So when I came back, he was like, oh, well, welcome. How's everything? Da, 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 da. And I'm like, um, this is the direction of what God is telling me. And I feel like it's a yes. And he's like, oh my God, that he has actually been praying since. I was so, so I was like, Ugh. so we're, we're official, right? And I didn't know so much about him, but I, we both knew that this relationship was for marriage. So we were, we were like, this was like from the get go. There was no in and out or whatnot. That, that was the, that was the eat from the get go. So 
and and that was how we were doing our thing so i would go visit him he would come visit me <clears throat> i would go for his rehearsals like he wanted everybody to know that we're dating oh see my girlfriend see my girlfriend see my girlfriend see my fiance like it was everywhere and in my mind so at some point he'd be like i am not telling people about us i'm like no like i'm just like i'm that kind of person that just jumps you get that jumps in and starts spreading everything but if that's your kind of like flow no problem i don't have a problem with you doing that but um to be very sincere with you i'm like i'm not that kind of person like i take my time no you know so for people that are close to me they knew that okay there's this guy that is actually always like coming to i'm not always talking about da, 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 da. <sighs> so this doctor fine tall fair and I, and I kept asking God why this person because everything that normally I would have actually like prayed for like when I, when I was talking to God about a husband or, or, or someone it, it didn't have those features so in my head I'm like okay okay this is God's plan I was but but I didn't doubt that I heard God like I didn't doubt it for one minute so guys <laughs> um so months went, I went to law school, it was in Yola, I was so sad, like, oh my god. Then when my auntie died in October, he was my rock, oh my god, he was, it was everything. He would come around, he would bring food, he would make sure, like, we will go for concerts together, I met his MD, I met too many relationships, I, would, I had too many doctor friends at that point, and all that. So on his 30th birthday in March... I'm like, it's the 30th. So I organized like a concert for him. I got a haul from like a big daddy person. I Like I got everything that you would think that I made cake. I made his outfits. Like I just made sure that this guy is everything. Like, oh. So sooner or later, I came back to Badon where I reside to have my internship. Like my externship, like whichever one it was. A court attachment and a chamber attachment. And through that time, we'll be together. We we'll, Like I'll go from court. I'll see him in, 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 in UCH then, which is the University College Hospital where he resides. Like everything was going on really well. But I started noticing that okay there's something that i'm not getting like there's, there's something there's something else then i would see him get angry and the way we react to things and i'm like okay and all these things will go on and on and on and i kept thinking ah, okay but like like i like i felt like okay maybe it was just me being oversensitive maybe it was just me be overthinking it like i thought about all these things and like it was getting too much like he will get angry he will keep malice when he's hungry um but few 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 months to all this me noticing all these things i i met his mom on her birthday so when i went to their house i like a normal yoruba girl that was taught i'm well well trained i got there i gave the i brought fruits to the house i knelt down and uh, my, and i greeted her it was a very very lovely um like oh she was very very happy to meet me um i think i, I went to daviva that's a cl clothing store that they sell african prints and i got like the most expensive like it was not to it was not to win her heart but for me it was like okay this is gonna be my mom so you get that was how i felt and and it was such a lovely like lovely 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 experience and i met his dad and everything was just rosy and jelly and i think a few months after his dad also had his birthday 60th birthday so we went back again i was like everything was just turned like turn 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 so a few months um i think before i went back to law school or no i came back from law school yes and i was back in ibado everything was going on well but i started noticing all these things like i said before and i said like pointing out to him he would snap about it he would this about that oh i'm supposed to be cleaning for him or oh, i'm supposed to be cooking from like dude I, i'm supposed to come to your place and i should be sitting down you cooking for me i don't believe you know that all those stuff you understand and instead like demanding certain things and be like oh i'm supposed to this oh i'm supposed to that uh, i was in your house that you can't bring for me and in my head i'm like you know i'm a student you know that like as you're working i'm all, like as i'm as a, as a student I'm a, I'm a student like it's not like there's one money pumping from somewhere so it's there like talking about the future, like, okay, so I didn't plan to, I'm not planning to stay over in Nigeria. So like, dude, you have to like, 
you know, do the needful. You have to like stop appearing on how to relocate. But I didn't tell him anything about like what I was or who I was or what not. Like I just told him that that's a plan that I see in a foreseeable future. So um, you should plan ahead for it. All that was shall going on. So guys, there was a particular one that broke the, the neck. Um, so normally I would do my makeup. I, I normally have been doing makeup like since forever. So, and he knew me with makeup. He knew me with hearings. He knew me with, um, how do they call it? He knew me with all these things. So it was not like it's today that I just sprung up and I started using makeup. So he said, oh, that he has a spiritual mom. Bitch, I'll be asking, let me meet your pastor. Let me meet your pastor. Let me meet your pastor. What are you accountable to? I'd be like, oh, uh, this person, he will show me this person. But I just knew there was someone else. So I... I asked again, and it's like, oh, she gave us an appointment, we should go and see her. Okay, so we went to this very, very far place, and it was all these mountain prayer grounds. <sighs> okay. So I get there, and before I get there, he was already telling me, remove your hair and wipe your makeup. I'm like, no, I will not do that. I will not pretend because I want to go meet this woman. If she cannot, if I can go to my father's house, which is church, this certain way, I will not change what I look like because of this person. Because when we get married, I will not say, <laughs> it's not a conversation we are going to have. You understand? Like, this is not a conversation that if, if you had a problem with me using makeup before now, you would have told me from the beginning of the relationship. That's number one. Number two, this was going to almost two years. And I'm like, and this is 2017 I'm talking about. No, 20, so it's, in, no, it's actually not two years. So it's in 2015. This was 2016. Yeah, so it was just one year. Yes, it was just one year actually. Year plus some months. So this is the beginning to one one year and a few months and I I was just I felt drained like in the relationship, like financially, emotionally. I had to like, oh I'm sorry when I do this. Oh I'm sorry. I, I just got fed up one time. Like, you know, I can't do I can't keep doing this anymore. And is he continued like that and i'm like nah i'm not doing this anymore so when we got to the the woman she just said a lot of things but the holy spirit prompted me to just speak in tongues all through the time i was going there we're coming back and he was upset guys he didn't talk to me for another one week or one week and a half because i didn't wipe my makeup off because he wanted me to look a certain way before his mother and the lord so i'm like who is this person like how how is she so important oh she's the one that hears for the family she's the... i'm like uh number one i believe that we should hear god for ourselves i believe in spiritual mentors which i have but i believe we should hear god for ourselves so when when i start hearing things like that i'm like okay so this disagreement goes on for another one week and a half and god gives me a revelation that um, I remember God gave me a revelation that if he doesn't, if we don't change like the perspective of how we see things, that this, this tree that he has given will, will get destroyed and he will destroy the tree himself. So I went to meet him as early as 6 a.m. that day. I went to meet him. I begged him, guys. I begged him like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I probably upset you. But this is the revelation God gave me. And I feel like it's very important. We need to be very careful. And I, and I was just, I was being sincere because I knew that, okay, God, I heard you. So, but guys, this didn't stop anything. Um, the church he used to go, which was a particular church in Ibadan, a very popular church. I, I would talk to the MD and I'm like, this person is acting a certain way. This person is doing a certain, like acting this a particular certain way. And the MD is like, I've noticed a couple of things that I, I just didn't want to talk about. But um, I just wanted to keep praying and know the direction of God. I spoke to my spiritual mentor, um, Pastor Popola, and he told me one thing. He said, I know what God's saying now. Like, every time I talk to you about this relationship, you, you keep telling me about what God has said last year. But what's God saying now? And he gave me instances of when God said, speak to the rock, and when God said, point at the rock to Moses. He said, so if you go and apply, speak to the rock to point at the rock, it's going to be a problem. I don't know what God is saying now. I talked, to, like, everybody just gave me same, similar stuff together. And I remember when I was in law school, I remember that there was a time that I think the vice president of Nigeria now was supposed to come to the University College Hospital for a meeting. And he was like, oh, they picked me out of everybody to actually go and sing, da-da-da-da-da-da, in front of everybody. Oh, my God. And I'm like, um, 
I understand, but shouldn't you be more focused on how to like see God's face and how you're gonna worship Him? And like that was my own concern. Like his concern was more or less like I'll be in front of all these people. Oh my God, I'll be singing. And I'm like, why is this person so human being obsessed? Like that was how I felt. And I made a prayer to God and I said, God, if this person just wants to, um, if this person just wants to. Um, sing because these people are around and not because he wants to like bring your presence down for this program don't allow him go and that was all my prayer to be very sincere with you and how God does it he had this lecturer that didn't allow them leave the classroom until after that event so I knew those were pointers and signs that God was trying to tell me to look out so all these disagreements were coming on all these things were coming on and I had to call him and I'm like bro we need to talk. We need to get counseled. I don't believe that this is the right direction of things to go for. So we talked to uh, my auntie, but she's a counselor. So she spoke to both of us. And she, just to, to that, like I told her, I'm going to compare some things. Um, and the reason why I'm grateful for that at this relationship, this didn't work, is because I believe that God was pointing me to certain things in my life that wanted me to also change. Like trying to change myself for someone, trying to being in graces with someone trying to cover red flags when I, I can see them you understand and all those things were going on for me and god just wanted me to like cut it off so when my auntie told us to go and pray this guy kept malice with me man said we should go and pray so the next week was my birthday he didn't call me until i think 7 p.m he sent a cake through his friend and that one just dropped it and left it hurts me like it hurts me i'm like we're just supposed to pray it's not like they told us not, not to talk to each other not to like celebrate to each other and that day i was celebrating like my my um the fact that i passed the bar and also like it was my birthday so i was i was just sad so all this time i was i was keeping my parents in the loop they were coming to nigeria for the call to bar so everything was was in check and i'm like okay am i still going to do this introduction with this person like it's just going to work out. So the week after my birthday, my auntie calls and says, oh, okay, you guys, I need to see you. It's two weeks already. It's one week already. What did God tell you? And he said, God didn't say anything, but I just feel like this relationship has come to its end. In my mind, I'm like, why would you even say that? Like the essence was to go and seek God's face about this relationship, but he didn't, he didn't care. So I understood what, what God showed me. So God gave me a blank sheet of paper and in that black shop paper, I didn't get like a direction. I prayed, I fasted, I wanted to know what God was saying, but it just gave me blank sheets. So by the time my auntie asked me and I showed her a blank sheet of paper and I'm like, this is what God told me. He's giving me blank sheets. So I don't know what it means. So a few days after, few I think a few weeks after, this guy sends me a WhatsApp message. Three weeks after, he sends me a WhatsApp message saying he was breaking up with me. Wow. And, that, and that was how I was. I was just in shock. And I was like, okay. So the next day on my dad's birthday, and guess what? Who, who calls me? Oh, help me see everybody to our daddy. So I, I knew there was something wrong. Like, I knew that there was something manipulative about him. Apparently, he had called those people that were close to me, and he had told them different lies, different tales of how the relationship went. He was still told them that we're still going on. We're seeing the relationship. Like a lot of lies, a lot of deceptions, a lot of things that went on in that relationship that I'm grateful to God that it wasn't that kind of person I settled down with. And you know, a lot of times as ladies, we always have that thing we want to place our minds on when it comes to relationships i want to make sure that this person fits all the criteria and once god has said yes let me just move on without knowing what god is saying now and that's and that's where i think god had to teach me certain things to understand that what i'm seeing in the present is more important so i had to learn that i had to learn that um it's not every time that something is working a certain way. I still have to open my eyes to see and, and, and see the pointers in when this person isn't true or when this person's character isn't in sync or whatever it is that God's plan was. And everybody and have people that can sincerely tell you the truth and point towards the direction of, I know, go back and find out what God is saying. And 
And that's why I said, I am grateful that relationship didn't work out. I'm grateful that God taught me through those lessons and was able to bring me out and help me see those things that he wanted me to work on myself and help me to even see in a wider spectrum the things this person, the amount of issues this person has. Four years after, um, I, I, we don't talk. That's the only person that is like my ex I don't actually talk to. And not because I'm angry, even though I was angry for a bit, but I, I, I had to come to a place of healing and I had to come to a place of forgiveness and I had to forgive him and let it go. But guys, to a very large extent, I, I just feel like there are times where God just releases you to just your own blessing and you should just take that blessing. So I don't know what kind of relationship you are right now and you feel like, oh, I'll patch this, I'll manage this. Sis, don't do it. Don't do it. I am begging you, don't do it. I know that you are of marriageable age. Like they will say, I know that everybody knows him with you. I know that everybody knows her with you. But if you see those certain things that God is pointing to you and you certainly know that those are things that are not right for your life and for your destiny, please make sure you run away. Make sure you run away. It's not worth it. So guys, I wanted to share that story with you so that you are encouraged and you don't make that mistake of wanting to bend the rules or wanting to please man or wanting to go out of your way to be living a double standard life when God has better in stock for you. I am super happy that two years after God settled me and I'm married and I'm happy in my home. And it's not like I'm perfect or my partner is perfect, but I am certainly sure that God God directed me right. And that blank sheet God showed me was that he was giving me a fresh start. And he sure did give me give me a fresh start. And I'm grateful to him that when we were both sure, when we were both settled in 2018, and we're sure that this was God's direction for our life a year after we got married. And I am um, a year, yeah, a year and um about six months. A year and eight months, yeah. We got married. So I'm grateful to God. And I'm grateful that my in-laws are the best. I don't even call them in-laws because I call them brother, sister, daddy, mommy. They're, they're amazing. But yeah, I know that it might not look that certain way for you. Or maybe you've given up on the fact that you might never meet this person. But let me tell you, God always stores the best for you and I. He never gives, gives us less than the best. Just trust him. Thank you very much for listening and watching this vlog. I hope it blessed you and I hope that you learn a couple of things from it. Till I see you next time. I love you. I celebrate you. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel at Anwadejire and follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram at Anwadejire. God bless you.